it's Melanie and Mr. Kong here in the background. Uh, it is a very sunny Tuesday for me. It is so bright right now. <laughs> um, but it's actually kind of nice. I think we're supposed to have like a high of 68 today, which is I think going to be kind of refreshing from all of the cold weather that we've had. Um, by the way, Penny is currently taking a nap in her kennel. She's been a little bit of a bad girl this morning, so she's She's on a little bit of a timeout, which is nice because it allows me to just spend some time with this guy back here who is just the sweetest ever. So I got a comment on one of my skincare videos within the last couple of weeks that I thought was kind of a good question, and I'll tell you guys what my answer was. So um, the girl who asked it um, was curious if I would be able to do a skincare routine style video geared towards someone who is in their 20s and I thought to myself for a little bit and honestly I came to the conclusion that I don't think that I would tell someone in their 20s who had the same concerns that I do to really do anything differently. Um, I might not recommend starting with retinols like in the early 20s but definitely towards the latter 20s starting to incorporate some retinols but basically everything else i would say use these things because these have worked really well for me um and the stuff that i always deal with most of you guys are familiar but if you're new i deal with very oily skin i've had super oily skin since i was like in middle school um i tend to deal with clogged or uh, clogged pores in the form of blackheads um you know I, I have enlarged pores and so typically I don't get pimples I tend to go the blackhead route so those have always been an issue for me um you know now more so than in my 20s signs of aging are a concern um but yeah like the stuff that I was dealing with in my 20s is stuff that I'm still dealing with now. Um, you know, I still have very oily skin even though I'm 40. I thought that would slow down or maybe that I would go more towards just oily or combination skin. Um, I'm, I still am prone to blackheads if I don't stay on top of exfoliating deeply into my pores with BHA. Um, you know, and obviously the signs of aging are starting to show a little bit more readily now. I'm lucky that with the oily skin, I don't get quite as many wrinkles as my friends who are the same age as me but have very dry skin. I notice that they, you know, need to worry a little bit more about the fine lines and like deeper wrinkles than I do. So I guess that's a trade-off, but it is frustrating having an oil slick across your face every single day when you've been dealing it with it for like well over 20 years by this point so um yeah but what it kind of what that comment made me think about was what advice would i have given my 20 year old self um or really any time in the 20s because I'll be honest I really did not get into skincare until rather recently um, it wasn't until I started YouTube and was a couple years into YouTube that I really started thinking like you know what would make my makeup go on actually a whole lot better is if I took better care of my skin up until honestly I hit that like wall I thought I can just use makeup to cover up my crappy skin and then perfect you know like that solves the problem right but it took me I don't know I'm I don't I don't think I'm dumb <laughs> but it just took me a really long time to put two and two together that like if I take better care of my skin then I don't have to pile as much makeup on my face so um you know that was definitely the number one thing that I thought about with that question that I got on that video I was like well if I could go back in time I would definitely like use a few key products that I think would have helped my skin look even better by this point 
So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. It's just kind of more like a vlog style video about what I wish I would have known and done back then that I think would have helped my skin look even better than it does right now. I'm very happy with my skin. I think that, um, you know, starting when I did was good, but I wish I would have done it sooner because I think that, um, especially with a couple of key things that I wouldn't be dealing with some of the issues that I have now that are going to be a little bit harder to get rid of. And I'll get into that in a second. So, um, yes, back in my twenties, first thing I wish that I would have invested in the Clarisonic a lot sooner than I did. I did not get my Clarisonic until I think it was 2011 that I bought my very first one and it was a total game changer you guys up until that point i had only washed my face with my hands never used a sponge never used a washcloth just like like i think a lot of people do just put the soap on my hands washed my face for like 30 seconds if that um and called it a day my skin was not getting clean most of the time to be totally honest like there were times where i would use a toner type product something like sea breeze i know <laughs> or some kind of like alcohol based toner which i really should not have done um but i you know was like if there's anything left this will get it off you know and that only served to dry my skin out even further, thus exacerbating the oil production that I already had going on. So I wish that I would have gotten the Clarisonic a whole lot sooner because I think I would have gotten a much deeper clean to my skin and then I wouldn't have felt as inclined to use a, um, like a toner that has alcohol in it. So that's the very first thing. The second thing that I wish I would have known in my 20s is that I didn't need to use a really harsh cleanser either. Uh, I used to be very loyal to the Neutrogena, um, like the, the one that came in the orange bottle. I don't remember what it's called even. I think it's still out. It, it's like the 2% salicylic acid. Um, I would use that morning and night and that actually, that was really harsh on my skin. And again, I think that it dried my skin out quite a bit. Um, I wish I would have used a much more gentle cleanser. Right now, the Paula's Choice um, Skin Balancing Oil Reducing Cleanser is fantastic. It's just, it's a wonderful go-to that I always end up going back to because it is just super gentle. I can use it around my eyes. There are other cleansers that I also really love. The Exfolicate from Kate Somerville is amazing. There's one from Derma E that I'm using right now that is wonderful as well. But I always tend to go back to that Paula's Choice one because it's super basic, but it works. And combining that with my Clarisonic is a great way to keep my skin clean. So yeah, I just wish I would have done a better job of cleansing my skin to begin with um, and not using harsh toners. Second, and this should actually probably have come first, SPF. I... I have honestly not been wearing SPF on my face for that long. Like if I look at the entire span of my like 40 years, um, it was only about five, six years ago that I started regularly wearing SPF on my face. And I think that caused a lot of damage for me in terms of um, exacerbating the sebaceous hyperplasia that I'm dealing with right now. They are genetic. Um, my mom has some on her face and I think that my biological dad has a ton of them. So I do think that there is a genetic component to that for me and I'm just gonna be predisposed to them. But I do think that excessive, um, frequent sun damage can also exacerbate the problem and make them even worse. And I think that in my 20s when I was using tanning beds, I know, I know, another thing I wish I would have like not done at all but um, I would literally go out in the sun or in the tanning bed and try to tan my face and when I was doing that I didn't wear an SPF because it's a lot easier to get a tan when you are not protected from the sun right um, 20 year old logic right um, I just didn't think it was important and now I am super religious about it I 
cover every part of my body that is exposed to the sun with sun protection factor and um, I just think it's so important and I wish I would have started doing it earlier. Um, another like two specific products that I wish I would have started using much earlier on were BHA, so beta hydroxy acid. Um, I use the BHA9 from Paula's Choice. I'll try to link a lot of what I'm talking about down below, but most of you guys have heard me talk about these things forever, so I'm not spilling any like secrets here. But beta hydroxy acid, especially from Paula's Choice, has just been amazing for my skin. I, I wish I would have found Paula's Choice a little bit sooner than I did. Um, and I started using them like many years ago now. Like, um, but it wasn't until after I got on YouTube that I like started learning about the company and really trying a lot of her things. And I've fallen in love with so many things. But um, a liquid BHA or some kind of BHA treatment that had a lot of good hydrating ingredients also included in the formulation would have been fantastic for me because I would have been able to eradicate a lot of the blackheads on my face a lot sooner. Um, and then I think that would have helped with maybe my pores not being quite so enlarged because part of the reason why I have such large pores is because I had so many blackheads and you know, once they were finally gone, I was still left with that big hole in my face and many, many big holes in my face because I just didn't, I wasn't good about going and getting extractions done. I just would kind of like use that Neutrogena cleanser and hope for the best, but it never really was enough to eliminate the blackheads the way that um, regularly using BHA products has been able to like eradicate them from my face. So BHA is a big one for me. Um, also AHAs, starting to incorporate some kind of glycolic, lactic, malic, whatever type of um, alpha hydroxy acid um, to exfoliate the top layers of my skin. I really was never good in my 20s about exfoliating my skin. And that just, again, helped to exacerbate that like clogged pore look that I had to my skin and I mean for me it was always fine because I would just plaster makeup over top and so my skin would look it would look good because I had makeup on and I used very heavy coverage type makeup and you know then I didn't really have to worry about other people seeing that stuff because I just covered it up um, but as soon as I got home and took off my makeup I would look in the mirror and go oh <laughs> That's not cute, um, and it doesn't feel good. Like there was just a lot of texture on my skin. Exfoliation is something that I should have done a little bit more frequently. I'm sorry if you guys are seeing like crazy shadows on my face. I'm just realizing that the sun is like, it's moved a little bit, so I'll try to scoot over here. Um, but yeah, exfoliating would have been such a good thing to do, but gentle exfoliation, again, in the form of BHAs and AHAs versus like, scrubbing at my skin in any kind of way but honestly there would go there would be weeks where you know I wouldn't use like a scrub type product and we all know what we used in the 90s and early 2000s the St. Ive scrub right the one with the apricot ground up apricot shells um or the walnut shells in there it's awful awful for your skin you're just tearing your skin when you're using something like that and I would really scrub at my skin sometimes because the harder you scrub, the better, right? So another thing, I just, these things just keep popping into my head. I wish I would have just been more gentle. Like when I was exfoliating, I should have been more gentle and I shouldn't have been as aggressive and just hardcore with it. Um, I would go through phases sometimes where I would use the St. Ives scrub like every single morning in the shower. Like that was my morning face wash and not a good idea. <laughs> I'm sure I caused damage to my skin that I am still now trying to undo like 15 years later. So yeah, it's just, there's so much stuff that I wish I would have started earlier on. Honestly, the only thing that I probably was okay with starting in my 30s was retinols. Um, I don't think they're really super necessary for women or men in their 20s. I, if you have, 
Um, if you're breakout prone, maybe your dermatologist, you know, thought maybe like Retin-A or Tretinoin was like a good thing to use. And then definitely, absolutely. But as far as like anti-aging stuff, um, I still don't think that I would have started retinol for that purpose in my 20s, but definitely at the start of my 30s for sure. Um, but yeah, everything that I'm doing now, I just wish that I would have started it or wish that I would have known that in my 20s. Um, some people are really blessed with great skin in their 20s and all they have to do is wash their face and put on a moisturizer and they're good. I always envied people like that. I had a couple, a couple of girlfriends who were just fine washing their face with like a bar of soap and their skin looked great. Um, that was not my lot in life. <laughs> so I just, you know, did what I thought was a good thing to do and, you know, would like pick at any pimples that I had or, you know, try to squeeze my own blackheads. And a lot of times I just ended up with little scars or my skin just looked extra rough for a few weeks while everything healed up. But I would just be undoing a lot less damage right now if I would have started all of this stuff sooner. If I was just more gentle with my skin, more kind, more thorough, um, yeah, and just started using better quality products. The thing is, I don't think you have to necessarily spend a fortune on skincare. I do because I'm, I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm okay spending, I have the money to spend on stuff like that. Um, would I have been able to spend this kind of money in my 20s? No, <laughs> absolutely not. But I could have definitely spent a little bit more than what I did and probably gotten some better results if I would have just done a little bit more research. So I think building a good basic routine for yourself as you're coming like into your teens and then tweaking things as you're going into your 20s as you're noticing different you know, depending on your skin type, if you're starting to notice some early signs of aging or if you're noticing that you're breaking out more, you have to be able to adjust your skincare um, to, to what your skin is doing at any given point in time. You know, maybe in the winter you need to use more hydrating products. In the summer, you're okay without using really heavy moisturizers. You know, you just really have to pay attention to your skin and I think that's the thing that I have become much more cognizant about the older I've gotten is I just look at my skin, I see what it needs, and I adjust accordingly. Um, that means that at some points during the year, I will put certain skincare products away until it's, you know, maybe fall again, and then I think, okay, now I can go back to using that thing. Um, sometimes it means going out and buying something new because something else popped up that I've never dealt with before. Uh, but just pay attention to your skin. Make sure that you are thorough with your skincare. Um, watch lots of reviews for lots of different products. You know, there are certainly affordable skincare lines out there. A couple that I would gear you towards if you're in your 20s and you're on a tighter budget is Derma E. Go check out Derma E. They have wonderful products. Um, so far, I think that Good Molecules for me has been better than The Ordinary, um, but Good Molecules is probably one to check out. And I will, by the way, I think I'm gonna do kind of an update on that line next week because I do have some thoughts on that that I don't wanna necessarily plop here. But, um, you know, especially if you're just starting out with skincare, get a good basic moisturizer cleanse your skin properly, whether that means using just a facial brush that you can buy, you know, at the drugstore or um, if you are able to invest in a Clarisonic. Um, make sure you have a good nighttime moisturizer. If it's formulated good enough, also put that underneath your eyes. For the daytime, make sure that you are using an SPF. Um, the one that I swear by that I think is just fantastic is this Paula's Choice one. It's the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This has been a life changer for me for sure. Um, it's a moisturizer and an SPF in one, so it's kind of great double duty for the daytime. Um, gosh, just wash your face every night. Don't ever sleep with your makeup on. Um, all that stuff just builds up over time, and it just means that you have to work harder and spend more money in the future. So start out with a good basic routine, be consistent. Um, don't be too harsh on your skin. Don't be too aggressive. Um, and just take the time to look at your skin and see what it needs.
you know? Those are the things that I wish I would have known in my 20s. So it, I don't think that I have a lot of like younger subscribers, but if you are slightly younger, um, those are things that I would encourage you to think about and to sort of um, invest in at an earlier time in life in order to maybe avoid some things in the future. So, oh my gosh, that light is like, how, how awful has it been on my face here? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I certainly wish I could go back in time and impart this knowledge to my 20 year old self, but you know, you live, you learn. And then, um, you just spend a little bit more money in your forties and, uh, correct all those issues like the sebaceous hyperplasia. So I am actually, by the way, going to visit um, Penny from Penn Smith Skin Care uh, in April. We've been trying to get together for like a couple of months now for a coffee date, but stuff has like kept coming up. And um, she is an esthetician. And so I just, I'm gonna go see her at her office for her first date. And um, I'm gonna actually have her take a look at my sebaceous hyperplasia. And she has a couple of things in mind that she thinks might work so we're going to talk about that so um i'll take you guys along for that journey but um again i don't think i would be dealing with quite as many of these little bumps if it wasn't for um the sun damage <laughs> that i incurred in my teens and 20s with the tanning beds and stuff so anyway all right um let me know what your skincare advice to your 20 year old self would have been let me know down below in the comments and hopefully that is a plethora of knowledge for all of the younger girls that might stumble across this video. So thanks a lot for taking the time to watch. Let me know if you have any questions and um, you'll see my sunny self here um, tomorrow. Take care.